Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to apply an iClone motion to your own custom rig from the Character Animation Toolkit for 3D Studio Max. This process will involve importing your rig into 3D Exchange for bone mapping and motion insertion, and then export back to 3ds Max. I'm going to get this motion here from the 3D Exchange portal page in our marketplace, and apply it to my custom cat character in 3ds Max. We've provided some sample cat profiles to make this process a bit easier for you as well. Just check the link in the description for a free download. The first thing you'll want to do is to create your own cat skeleton. So go to the Helpers tab on the right and you can select Cat Object from the drop down list. Make sure you have Base Human selected and then proceed to create your skeleton base. You can size your character as you wish, but make sure you select the feet and then add the toes as a digit from the Modify panel. The next item of business is to align the upper and lower arms as well as the hands to the horizontal plane. Get an orthogonal front view to be as accurate as possible on this, and rotate each arm segment individually to get them as straight as possible. Make sure you select local axis to do this properly. You'll also want to check the upper view to make sure that the arms are not too far forward or backward. Once you're done one side, just copy the arm position to the other side by selecting the Paste Mirror option. You'll also want to select the hip bone and raise up the skeleton a bit so there is not bending in the legs like in an ideal T-pose. Next, I'll go into the schematic view to select the skeleton sections I want for export. Once that's done, I simply need to go up and export selected as FBX format. Make sure you select the Autodesk Media and Entertainment preset at the top, and also Embed Media if your character includes a skin mesh. Right, so the next step is to bring the FBX into 3D Exchange and characterize it so that iClone motions can be applied to it. When imported, the model will look like a simple skeleton like this. The first step of the characterization process is to select Convert to Non-Standard, which will bring you to the bone mapping step. Now with Character Studio biped characters, you can use a one-click bone mapping solution here. But because this is a custom bone character, you'll need to use the bone mapping reference image on the right to map all the bones in the character hierarchy appropriately. For the spine and neck sections, make sure you go from the bottom bone markers up when you open their separate mapping images. Once you're done, you can check the Active checkbox and test out some of the preview motions. After that, just click Convert and move on to the motion loading step. Note that the skeleton has been converted to iClone non-standard format, which makes it compatible with all iClone body motions. I'm just going to drag in some iClone embedded dance motions into my motion library here, and test them out on my cat character skeleton. Keep in mind that there is a huge library of iClone motions, along with tons of others available for purchase and export in the 3D Exchange portal page. For example, I can preview this punching motion here, and then select Preview in 3D Exchange to test it on my cat character. I can proceed to purchase the motion, and after I do, it will appear in black text in my motion library. From there, I just need to add it to the perform list, then go up to export FBX. Remember to select the 3ds Max target tool preset and export both the geometry and animation. Now in 3ds Max, I want to import the FBX that I just exported from 3D Exchange. I'll again make sure I choose the Autodesk Media and Entertainment preset. Then in File Contents, I want to select Add, 
and make sure that I have the animation and fill timeline boxes ticked as well. After the import, you'll see the dummy bones along with the animation keys. The first thing I want to do now is go over to the spine control and set it to keyframes instead of procedural. I also want to do the same thing with the neck control as well. This needs to be done before capturing the animation in the character animation toolkit. Okay, now I want to open up the capture animation panel. From there, I want to choose a source object for my animation, which will be the pelvis of my dummy character. I also then want to choose base human and select the same pelvis bone. What you want to do from here is drag each bone from the left side to its corresponding bone on the right side to do the cat rig mapping. Once you finish your mapping, you can save it and load it up again whenever you need an iClone character template. Alternately, you can load the template that Reillusion has provided as well. The foot bones also need to be dragged over and defined as the platform controller. If you load the cat human bone template that Reillusion provides, you won't need to worry about the toe bone, and you can skip this step. Continue setting up all of your connections according to the cat rig and you'll soon see that your cat model will now move along with your animation. One thing you'll need to do manually, however, is move the foot platform to fit the dummy foot by hand. Make sure the base human platform is selected and manually move it to the correct position. So now your motion is all aligned, all you need to do is bake it to the cat skeleton. You want to select Capture Animation in the Capture Animation panel, and the motion will bake to the cat skeleton with keyframes generated for every bone. So after the motion has been baked to your cat skeleton, the dummy bones are now pretty useless, so you can go into the schematic view and delete that whole bone hierarchy. The cat system also provides motion layer editing if you want to further edit your motion. Here I'm just adding an adjustment layer, and I'm going to lower my character's pelvis at the extent of his second punch to make it look like a more powerful downward strike. However, you'll notice that I come into an issue where my arm penetrates the mesh of the leg as it's too far down. I can do the same thing with the arm and simply adjust it at the point where it's breaking through the leg mesh. Now it looks a lot better. If you want to compare differences, you can just toggle the layer state on and off to see what the motion looked like before and after your edit. It's as simple as that. Now you have a brand new full motion for your cat character in 3D Studio Max.